Hey, welcome everybody. I wanted to share some tips and tricks about night fishing. Night fishing is a great way to get started fishing, and it is in fact the way I got started fishing with rod and reel at my local lake. It can be a great way to catch all species of fish, including the catfish, crappie, and my personal favorites, the white bass and the hybrids. Through this video, we will look at the why, the when, and the how of night fishing and hope to give you some good tips on getting started and being successful. We will also discuss how sonar can be of help in putting you on fish along with the gear I use to night fish. All right, let's take a second and talk about the why the fish are around the lights. Lights attract plankton to an area, which in turn attracts all the bait fish, the shad, the minnows, which in turn attracts all kinds of game fish. Light basically starts an ecosystem around a lit up dock, a lit up bridge, or your own boat if you have lights on it. All right, let's take a minute and talk about when to night fish around lights. Many people think of night fishing as a summertime tactic but I've had better and more consistent luck in cooler water. This is my springtime go-to tactic. Here in Texas during the months of March, April, and May, I consistently have great trips fishing around lights at night, and it takes this searching for fish out of the equation. When the water temp is in the upper 70s by the end of May going into early June, it seems this pattern can be very hit or miss, especially when a full moon is about to occur or has just occurred. When that happens, you want to get to the lake before it is dark and set your lights up so that way you can try to start winning this battle against the full moon. That is a tip and trick that will help get you to have more success whenever there is a full moon. The moonlight competes with the lights on the dock in the boat and it usually wins. It scatters the plankton and bait around away from the light sources. Once summer hits, I find better success. White bass and hybrid fishing are around first light until late morning. Light sources are often the first areas I begin my search in the summertime, and I even fish a little before first light around these lights just to pick up a few fish before my trip really begins. In fall, this pattern should pick up again consistently. Uh, however, I stick with day fishing because around that time, the migratory birds are back on the lake. These birds locate and eat shad, which white bass and hybrids drive to the surface. I prefer doing this over night fishing, and the, fit and the migratory birds save me a lot of the work on locating the fish. All right, let's talk about how to catch these fish at night. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're crappie fishing or white bass or hybrid fishing like I love to do, or if you're catfishing. Uh, what you want to do if you're going to approach a dock and fish it, you want to go downwind and approach the dock uh, heading into the wind. So that way your nose is facing the wind and you are in control of your boat. Uh, boat control is very, very important. So that way you don't come crashing around the lights and, uh, and stir up all the fish. Uh, you want to be open-minded about how far away the fish may be from the light source. Though sometimes there will be a lot of action right in the middle of the light source, uh, a lot of the bigger fish and even more fish may be on the perimeter of the light source and they may even be 100 yards from the lights and kind of loosely related to it eating fish that are going to it. What I like to do to catch mainly white bass hybrids and uh, a few crappie is I will use an 8 ounce Roadrunner jig with a curly tail body or a swim body on it. I will throw it uh, around the parameter of the light first and then work my way towards the light source itself. I s usually start in the upper water column by throwing my bait and counting maybe one or two seconds and starting to retrieve. Once that uh, bite dies down, I then throw my bait out there again and I count down three or four seconds and start to retrieve. And once that bite down dies down, I then throw it out there and wait six or seven or eight seconds. And then eventually I just keep working my way down to the bottom and fishing all the water column very thoroughly. You never know what you're going to catch. I've caught uh, several white bass hybrids, crappie, and I have caught some largemouth bass doing this. For catfishing, if you want to try the catfish while you're doing this or you want to just specifically catfish, you can throw out some cut shad and they should be around the lights as well. 
typically closer to the bottom. One thing you may want to consider doing is tying off to a bridge or anchoring up in an area where you see fish, uh, specifically a windblown area, because again, wind blows the plankton to a, uh, an island or a hump or a point, and it helps concentrate the plankton, which the bait fish are eating, which the game fish are then following. So if you anchor up on a windblown point or a bridge column that's lit up, you can anchor up and then you can use uh, live shad and suspend the live shad off the bottom or uh, up higher in the water column wherever you see the fish at. That's a great way to catch catfish. I have done this and have caught uh, flathead catfish, blue catfish, channel cats, and hybrids and white bass all on the shad in the same night. So you never know what you're going to catch. But that is how I approach uh, night fishing. You can run and gun and hit uh, different light sources, uh, hit a dock until the fishing starts dying off, which may take 5, 10, 15 minutes. It may take 30 or 40 minutes. But once that bite dies down, you can then move to the next dock or the next source of light and fish that in the same way. And you, at my lake, there's about four or five areas that uh, consistently have the lights on. And I hop back and forth from light source to light source, and that gives the other areas time to recharge. It, more fish move in. Uh, the fish that I was you know, catching and disturbing, they've kind of forgotten what I'm doing, and then they start gaining interest again. So that's a, a very fun way is to kind of run and gun. One thing, if you don't want to anchor up on a windblown point, I hate putting all my eggs in one basket and, and anchoring up somewhere and hoping the fish come to me. One thing that I have invented is a little PVC light uh, raft. It's a three-quarter inch PVC, and I have some swimming noodle on the bottom of it. This uh, floats to where it will hold up my 12-volt deer feeder battery, and uh, that powers a submergible green light, uh, and it has about a two-pound weight with a string attached to it, kind of like a jug line. And uh, what I do is I go to the windblown areas and I put out this light raft and then that becomes one more source of light in the water that I can hop back and forth to between actual boat docks and bridges. Uh, I now have a little raft in the water that's uh, attracting fish on a key, you know, windblown hump point uh, or flat. All right, hey, let's spend a minute and talk about how sonar can help you find and catch fish on your next night trip. I usually rely heavily on sight imaging since most of the docks that I fish are in shallow water. Sight imaging really has the advantage in shallow water and it allows me to see fish without being directly on top of them. Sometimes I use my trolling motor and go past a dock and see if my sight imaging shows any fish under the dock before I ever stop to fish it. Side imaging also can help me know exactly where the fish are on a bridge. I can see if crappie are in brush piles, if fish are relating to the bridge pilings, or if fish are relating to where the light from the bridge meets its shadow. Once tied onto the bridge, I typically deploy my 360 sonar. This allows me to see in live time exactly where the fish are in relation to my boat. Once I'm anchored up, I typically will turn my 2D sonar's chart speed up to 10 along with a little extra sensitivity than I normally run with. This allows me to see exactly where the fish are concentrated in the water column. And now I can more accurately present my live shad, minnows, or goldfish down to them. If I were targeting crappie in a reservoir with standing timber, I would side image the timber before dark until I find out where the crappie are. Then I'd put my PVC light raft out and attach it to the tree before dark. This will hopefully help keep the crappie in that tree and also attract more crappie to the tree so that way when it's time to fish, there's a tree full of crappie. All right, briefly we will talk about gear that you need. I use a marine made 15 watt green submergible lights purchased from Amazon. They make three sizes and I have found the smaller cheaper version puts out a blinding amount of light and draws a fraction of the amps for my battery than the bigger versions do. The middle and bigger versions do put out more light, but they don't seem to light up the water any more than the smaller one does, and plus they draw four or five times the amps. 
Color of light is a debated topic, but it seems that general consensus is that green and white lights work best in fresh water and blue lights work best in salt water. If you get into night fishing enough, you may want to consider rigging up your boat with electrical quick connects. In my boat, I have electrical quick connects in the caprel system, and they're located every four feet on that caprel. So that way, when all my submergible lights are uh, connected, I can turn them on with one toggle switch and avoid tripping over a bunch of wires in the middle of the night. If you get into night fishing enough, you may want to consider buying some of these utility lights from Academy. I have an 8 inch utility light that's mounted on the front of my center console along with a toggle switch that activates it so that way I can quickly and easily have access to light in the front of my boat. One thing you may want to consider doing if you get serious about night fishing is mounting LED lights in your boat. Not only does it light up everything and keep you safe, but it also creates a very fun atmosphere. I have found that the lights from Academy, they're 27 inches long and they cost about $15. Uh, those are very strong and dependable. I've yet to have any issues with them. Uh, and they seem to hold up uh, much better than the lights that I had got on Amazon. Initially, I bought some cheap lights on Amazon uh, and I had went through several pairs of them uh, before I just ended up throwing the whole thing away and starting over with these Academy lights, which have held up tremendously.